Hey, Mr. Neely here, just showing you how to uh, find the volume of a rectangular prism using the formula. And the rectangular prism does not have uh, whole numbers for the sides. So this is from the released EOG. A right rectangular prism is shown. It gives the three dimensions, the length, the width, and the height. What is the volume of the prism? So to find the volume of the prism, we need to first off write down the formula. So the formula for the area, uh, the volume of a prism is length times width times height. Now, if we aren't sure which one's the length, the width, or the height, it's irrelevant because of the fact that the commutative property says I can multiply any two numbers in any way and it comes out to be the same answer. So don't worry about that. Don't fret if you put this first or this first. It doesn't change the result. So I'm just going to put down from left to right the numbers given to me. So we have 2 and 1 half times 2 and 1 half times 3 and 1 fourth. Now, before we can multiply these mixed numbers, we need to make sure we change them into improper fractions. Remember, to change a mixed number into an improper fraction, you have to use the around the world method or simply multiply the denominator by the whole number and then add that to the numerator. So two times two is four. Four plus one is five. Well, I just did this one, so I'm gonna just rewrite the answer again right here. Four times three is 12, and then I add 12 to one, and we have 13. Now, anytime I multiply fractions, I always look for a way to first simplify. Unfortunately, I can't simplify. None of the denominators can simplify with any of the numerators. Two won't go into five, and two goes into four, so we know that four won't go into five, and four won't go into 13, and you know, and so on. So we're gonna have to multiply all the numerators and all the denominators. Now, if you are uncomfortable with multiplying this many at one time, that's good, that's completely fine. I would multiply two at a time instead of trying to multiply all three at a time. Five times five is 25, and two times two is four. Now, we can multiply 25 by 13. Well, I'm gonna come here and put some uh, work on my side right here. I'm gonna definitely not use a calculator for this because the whole process here is to build our skills up in multiplication of fractions and mixed numbers and decimals as well. So we're gonna multiply three times five to get 15, carry the one. Three times two is six plus the one is seven. Now one is in the tens place. So I'm gonna put a zero down here to hold its place. Cross out that one since I've already used it. One times five is five and one times two is two. Once we get our two products for the two digits of this bottom number, we then add the two products to get our ultimate product, our final product. So we have five plus nothing is five. Seven plus five is 12, carry the one. And we have one plus two is three. This is our new numerator. And of course, four times four is 16. Now, <clears throat> this is a number that looks nothing like the answers they give us because these are mixed numbers and what we have is an improper fraction. To change an improper fraction to a mixed number, you need to divide. Using longhand division, we're gonna put the top in, bottom out. So the top always goes in, whether it's big or not, it always goes in. The numerator always goes inside. It is always gonna be the dividend. It's not because it's bigger, because sometimes it will not be bigger. The denominator will become our divisor. Then we just do one number at a time. 16 will not go into three. 16 will go into 32 twice. Two times 16 is 32. The difference is zero. We're gonna carry down the five. Now we can't just say 16 doesn't go into five so we just won't do anything. We need to have a digit above the five. 16 will not go into five so we have zero. Of course, that means that zero times 16 is zero if you really need to write this step out. How do we write our answer? Well, the number on the top will be our whole number. Let me move the paper over so you can see this. This will be the whole number. This right here is the remainder 
we always put the remainder as the numerator. What do we put on the bottom? The divisor, or the, uh, the divisor, which is the denominator. Now, if you can simplify it, go ahead, but check the answers and see if you have 20 and 5 sixteenths. See if any of these answers are the same. And there it is. 20 and 5 sixteenths inches cubed. Now, um, try this on your own. Uh, let me know how it goes.